Welcome back to another episode of Mean Girl Pod. Merry Christmas. 2023 might have been the biggest year of your entire <laughs> life. I'd be like, man, it's not going to get worse. And I'd call it Journey back. Holy shit. It dude. didn't rain for you. It was a tsunami. I was in the trenches <laughs> taking grenades for like a second. I was like, whoa, dude. better because of it, baby. I think 2024 is going to be a beautiful year for you. Thank you. I'm excited for what is in store. Me too. And like worked hard to get here. I feel like I feel I feel like I earned it. And this round means more. You did earn it. So did you. Thank you. Good for us. I'm, I'm excited for 2024. Also, I love an even number. Four is one of my favorite numbers. Let's I, get into it. I'm so excited about four and the 20s and all of that. <laughs> I, I, just, I just can't believe Christmas is in a few days. The New Year's in a, in a week. Like, holy crap, this year flew. What did you get, Pete? Oh, I can say it because it's... I don't know if he's... Don't let him listen to this episode. Come on, tell the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I don't think... I think we've we, we've had we've exchanged gifts since <laughs> at this time. So it's funny. I usually don't like Christmas. This year I am obsessed with it. I got a little tree for Pete's apartment. I decorated it, put our presents underneath. We got stockings. I saw. We got stocking stuffers. You guys, it's <laughs> it takes the right person to fall in love with because this woman over here is like, I want kids. Who doesn't want kids? And I'm like, bitch, you. <laughs> I know. For a year and a half, I sat and listened to you don't want kids. And now you're like, I've got a tree. It's been so fun. So I so love giving gifts. I think it's so fun. I was telling Alex earlier today, I was like, when I have kids, I'm going to spoil the crap out of them for Christmas. Because seeing a smile on someone's face when you give someone a gift is so much better than getting a good gift. I know. So I went a little crazy for Pete and I got him a jacket that he really wanted. And it was the funniest thing. Like one day we were just sitting, he's like, I really want this jacket, but I'm not going to spend the money on it. And I was like, oh, what's the jacket screenshot? And I was like, I'll buy it. And then I got him a bunch of like clothes and then skincare items. <laughs> and then- This is so cute. <laughs> that was really nice of you. Thank you. And then I got him um, a cute little like matching mug set because we always call each other these cute little nicknames and that's what I put on the mugs. You you monogrammed them? No, I... Um, Sharpied them? No, I... <laughs> we Put a t tape down them? <laughs> no. We <laughs> these these cartoon characters that we call each other and they happen to have merch. So I bought us matching coffee cups. All right. What's, what is it? <laughs> Come on. Um, so they're like the pan like have you ever seen the I think they're actually technically anime. Oh my god. And it's like a pa pancake in a chocolate bar. And your pancake. Yeah, the pancake's always like or the like he's always like pancake, I love you. And you call him chocolate bar? No, but he always calls me pancake. <laughs> but like in the in the TikToks, it's always pancake in a chocolate bar. It's really cute. That's a really cute actually. Okay, good job. Yeah. Do you think you're out gifting him or do you think he's reciprocating with the same level of gift? So I don't know. I, he has seen, so we're filming like, we're, we're filming this episode a little early, so I don't know if he's opened my gifts yet. Um, but he's seen how many gifts I've gotten him and he wasn't nervous at all. Okay. I was going to say, wrap them and show him. So there's an even playing field. Yeah. Like I wrapped them and brought them to his apartment and put them under the tree. And so he's well aware and he didn't seem shocked. Okay. Good. And good he job. even said, he was like, I bought you way too much. And I didn't want to give him any clues on what I wanted. Cause I wanted to like, see what he would get me. Um, what do you think he got you? I have no idea. Ooh. Like weeks ago, he was like, I don't know what I'm getting you. I'm like, how? I don't know what I want for Christmas. Maybe, maybe, and maybe he's like, I have no idea what she got me. And he doesn't even remember saying he wanted the jacket. I know. I hope not. He's going to, I, I hope to God, like his mom and dad didn't get him any of the gifts. Cause like, I'm sure he sent that jacket to them. How are you exchanging? So we're going to have like a little mini Christmas before I go to Florida. <laughs> what are you going to do? Like dinner? Um, so originally I really wanted to do like wake up, like a fake wake up Christmas morning and like sit in our pajamas and drink coffee and open gifts. But there's no weekend. I'm in New York in December. Oh, so I think we're just going to do like a Christmas night where we make dinner, order food, drink wine and open gifts. Okay. So much fun. Yeah. Either way, I'll be blessed. That's adorable. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to see what he got you. You have to text me. I will. I'm so excited. Oh, yay. Okay. This, the, you like dating him came at the perfect time. 
Oh my gosh. It, like this sounds sounds really bad to say, but the holidays are so much more fun when you're in a relationship. Sorry, no offense. It's totally fine. It's, <laughs> it's, it's fine. But like, because I've been single for so long and I was, I was like, the, the like the holidays are a hard time because they make you feel more lonely sometimes. It's just like a sad, it can be a very sad time for people. But this is the first year where I'm like very happy. <laughs> And I'm like, I love the holidays. This is so cute. You are like, you're like, I am so obsessed. I know. This is fun. I'm very happy for you. Please enjoy every moment of it. And I know he got you a fabulous gift. And the reason I know that is because he got you a housewarming gift and it was wine and a candle. Yeah. And it's like, that was a man who has a good mama. So he got you good gifts. I know. I'm excited. Me too. So I think we have something that you need to tell us about because a very monumental thing happened to you the other day. It did. I took a pregnancy test and it was positive. I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's actually a bad, that's a bad joke. Like, I don't know. I just want to think of the most drastic thing ever. Clip that one. Clip that. And we usually say cut that. We're like, just clip it. Just clip it. Let's cause war on Christmas. So what did you do the other day? Went on. And, and it's the number one thing people ask me. I'll put up questions and I don't even know why. And it's just like dating. Are you dating? Are you dating? And it's like, no, no, no. Okay. So finally, I, I went out on a, a girl date with a friend. Like a friend date. I got set up on, this is no, she's who set me up on the date. I went with a boy. Okay, but, but can you make, can you announce first? I went on my first date, ladies oh! and gentlemen. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this moment for my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Since I ever met you. So I was set up on a girl date, a friend date. Okay. And we went and those are, you never know how those are going to go. Yeah. But since being single, I go on like way more than I used to. I mean, I just like do everything now, yeah. right? Like, so I'm, like girl dates. Girl dates. I'll go, I'll go out on happy hours with friends. Like I'm just kind of like rolling around, right? Most though revolve around work. I will say I'm not like very social anymore. Like going to clubs type thing. I'll go to dinner at happy hours with people that you can learn something from. Yeah. So I go with this girl and like we hit it off immediately. And she's like on the finance side of startups, sort of. Mm -hmm. I've met her. She's awesome. She's the best. Yeah. She's so much fun. And we are just having like the best time. And towards the end, she was like, all right, can I set you up on a date? And I was like, you know what? Like you could set me up on a date because I think you would just nail my type, mm -hmm. uh, which I don't even know what that is. So yeah, yeah go for it. Um, so the next morning, she just group texts me and the guy. Oh, I, I love that. Well, I'm like, you know, like, okay. Because it can go really wrong when your friend sets you up. Totally. Yeah. And then I was like, is she even going to do it? You know, so she group texts us, says both of our names. And she's like, I think you two would have so much fun together. You're both aware of the situation. I'll let y'all take it from here. Such a business owner move. <laughs> so boss of her. And I just read it. And I was like, I think I liked the message. And I said, hi, blank. Thank you, blank. And like left it at that. And I was like, he'll do his thing. In the group chat. Yes. Okay. And then I just put my phone up. And then I checked my phone like 10 minutes later. And I had a text from him. And he was like, hi, Alex. So he lives between LA and New York. Okay. And, he, and, I, and I did know this. He was, he was like, hi, Alex. Um, so excited to meet you. Would love to take you out to dinner. I'll be in New York in two weeks. Here's my two date options. Um, so you pick the night and then I'll tell you what we're doing. I love an organized man. It was fabulous. How did you feel when you got that text? I was like, okay. Uh, I I felt excited, but also like, whoa. Because you've never gone on like a first date, right? With someone you don't know. Right. That's crazy. Like, it's crazy. But so exciting. So I was like, okay. So actually what happened was, so this story that I'm telling you was maybe like three weeks. No, no, not three weeks ago. It was maybe like four or five weeks ago. Okay. So the date rolls around. I didn't go on the first one. Why? I, I freaked out. Okay. I texted Ams and I'm like, type up a text message. It's four hours before I'm supposed to go. You bailed day of Alex I, Bennett? I could not go. I don't know what happened. I just was like, I can't go on the state. I give you a pass because of everything you've been through. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp because Jordan and I, we love and we live by playing offense on life, not defense, and being in touch with our feelings and being the best version of ourselves, which is why we love therapy, right? Yes, we do. Oh, baby, I can't even imagine what my life would be like without it. And you guys, you guys know on Me and Girl Pod, we talk about therapy all the time. And so whether or not you've been in therapy personally 
or you're thinking about giving it a try, you guys, we cannot recommend BetterHelp enough because it is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited entirely to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash mean girl today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash mean girl. Happy therapy, especially around the holiday season. Yes. So AMS types up just a pretty like, no BS response, but nice. And I just copy paste. I send it to him. He had a really sweet response. Not too sweet though. He was like, I totally understand. Um, maybe the next time in the city, our schedules work out, but- Thank you for telling me. Okay. Was not a dick, but was not too nice. Like just a very good response back. So he calls me last week. Oh, no, no, I I don't hear from him. Like, I think he maybe responded back to one of my Insta stories, like something normal. And like, we haven't had any communication since then. So then, but last week I was sitting somewhere and and I see his name pop up on my phone. I thought, huh. He called you. He called me. So after I like finished my stuff, I call him back. Oh, you didn't pick it up? No, I didn't pick it up. And I called him back afterwards and I was like, hello. And he was like, Alex Bennett, how are you? And I was like, I'm great. How are you? And he said, good. I'm coming to the city. Wasn't planning on it, but I'm actually coming tomorrow now. And I was like, he's like, I got to come for business. So can I take you? Can I make good on that date that we didn't go on? Um, And he was like, I'm there Saturday and Sunday. He's like, here I am. is Is your Saturday night free? And it was. And I was like, it is free. He, I love the confidence. He called you. He called me. And just, he put his ego aside and flat out was like, I don't care that you bailed the first time. I'm going to ask you out again. Waited the three weeks in between. Totally appropriate. Gave you your space. Gave me my space. Wasn't weird. Called. He's like, I'm randomly coming, which I'm sure he randomly was. That's why he called, not texted. And then he says, okay, Saturday night. So I'm like, okay. And you know why? So we talked on the phone actually for like 25 minutes, which for me is about seven years. Yeah, I'll say you hate phone calls. I hate phone calls. And at one point actually he had to FaceTime me because he was explaining to me something about his office. And wait, he was- Wait, 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 what? Yeah, so he, he was explaining to me his office because he's in California at this time. It's dark in New York and he's explaining to me what he's looking at. And he, it's, his office is in Venice, California, which I almost moved to and I like really know the area. And I'm like, where? Like, what are you looking at? And he's like- I know this is weird, but can I just FaceTime you really quick? I'll show you. I was like, yeah. So he FaceTimes me. Wait, did you know what he looked like? Yeah, I knew what he looked like. Okay. Yes, I'd seen a photo of him and I like, I found his Instagram. So I'm like showing me and then he pans back to it and he just kind of like starts talking normal. So like I FaceTimed him for like 10 minutes. Th- this it was a pivotal moment for me. It's honestly why I was able to attend the date. Wait, did you accept the date before or after the FaceTime? Before. How did you answer? Were you like, were you like nervous inside or were you excited? Like, what were you feeling? I was pretty calm and I think I got really lucky. Like I took it as a sign of, I had a couple, I might meet you out after dinner, like Saturday plans. Yeah. Like I I said I was, after a couple of trips. I had a bunch of like might plans on Saturday, but I didn't have like a birthday dinner. Nothing set in stone. So when he said, do you have plans Saturday? I was like, I just don't. And I can go with you. And I would like to now. Um, and it was just a feeling I had. So I like went with my gut. I love that. But the FaceTime took it over the edge. Like after we hung up from the FaceTime, I was like, wait, he was really cute. And he was normal, funny, great banter. And just, I was like, I could go, I could go to dinner with this guy. Yeah. I was like, I totally. So the FaceTime took, took me over the finish line. So anyways, nice hang move, up. Men, if you're listening. Uh, yeah, it, it was. The, I just, that screams confidence to me and I love that. And there was a little bit of connection I had that like for somebody like me to get me to show up after what's happened, I was like, this is what I needed. So I don't, I hear from him that night and he's like, um, traveling tomorrow, I'll text you details about Saturday. So this is Thursday. Okay. He's mm-hmm. traveling on Fridays and I'll text you details tomorrow. Uh, the next morning he texts me, I'll pick you up at six, be hungry, but no, we're not eating till 8.30. Wear comfortable shoes. I am obsessed with that. Because you, you like don't know what you're doing, but he gives you enough details of what to wear. And then I said, I said, okay, got it on the shoes. I'll be pretty hungry. Give me like a sort of attire. He said, trendy New York casual, but still a night out, which makes tons of sense. Yeah. 
a blazer and jeans and like tennis shoes works. I was just going to say, that's what I picked out in my head. Right. You can do a hoodie and a blazer. Like, I was like, got it. Okay. So the day, so that's what he's on Friday. So Saturday morning I wake up and he texts me around one or two. Okay. I can't remember. And he says, how does he word it? I'm going to be at insert hotel right by my place. And he knows what area I live in. And he says, I'm going to be at a hotel by you. I can Uber and pick you up or you can meet me there. And I said, pick me up. I love the multiple choice he's giving you. I love the multiple choice. And I love that he did not call me the Uber. Yes. Because I think a lot of people are like, he should call you an Uber to the first date. I think, no, you get yourself to the first and the second date and in the third date. But on the fourth one, if he's like, this is my girl. I have a really big crush on her. Hey, I sent you an Uber. I don't want that precedent set right out of the gates. Yeah. But I, I think you could, I could appreciate it later, maybe on a couple times. So like I'm 30, I, you know, so I, I appreciated him saying I could pick you up in the Uber or I can meet you there. Okay. Question. How did you feel? Oh, I have a bunch of questions, but I'm going to quick push to this one. How did you feel? Um, okay, wait, no, I'm, that's going to open up a whole new, I have so many questions. Oh my gosh. Okay. How did you feel getting ready for the date? Do you know how I felt when you would go on dates now? Yeah. I like, <laughs> I have so many questions, but I'm like prioritizing in my brain because they could go to like so many other things. So first of all, when you get that text, like, how are you feeling about him asking to pick me up? Just like give him giving you like the tire, him asking you to pick you up. Like, what are you feeling during this? Okay. I thought I would feel like not too cool for like numb to the process. I was really giddy and really excited. Okay, good. There's no other way to put it besides like I was pretty giddy. Okay. So when you're getting ready, did you have, it's, this is your first date, but like, did you have, I guess, start a pre-date ritual? Like, did you have a drink? Did you like, did you listen to music? Ams is over. All day? Okay. Ams is over. She was going to be, Ams was going to be over anyways. I tell her, I said that date I didn't go on. I'm going on and she's like, I'm coming over. We're just going to, I'm going to sit in there. So she was, the, I had to have that. I don't know that I could have like gotten ready alone. Like you, if she wasn't there, you would have had to have come over. I, I was out of town because I would have been there. I, I, I was gone. I don't know where I was. Um, yeah. You were out of town actually. Yeah. Oh, you, I think you were in Connecticut. Oh yes, I was. I yeah, was. Yeah. 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 So I was freaking out about what to wear and she was just dying laughing and she was like, this is cute. So I wore a white button down shirt with like a jean vest over it, okay. jeans and then dunks. I love that. I felt very myself. How I was your my hair up. Oh, I put my hair up. I felt very, just felt very Alex. Question. Was it up to the point where like, you know how you always wear your hair up, but you take it down and it's like really pretty curly or was it like up and you could not take it down. It was up and I couldn't take it down because I didn't want to have to think about it. Okay. I guess you were doing something like you thought maybe sporty because you said wear comfortable shoes. So hair up is a good idea. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, if it's it down, I, I tend to touch it. So I was like, put the hair up. What'd your makeup look like? Do you do a smoky eye? I did kind of a heavy makeup because I kind of had a casual outfit. I love this. So I went a little heavy on the makeup. Um, So I was excited getting ready. Okay. Uh, okay. So then I go downstairs. Wait, did you have any drinks before? I had a glass of wine. Okay. Love. We both sipped on wine while we were getting ready. Yes. Red or white? Uh, red. Ballsy. No, not red. I'm <laughs> sorry. It was, it's that pink Juliet. It's rosé. I was going to say, wow, ballsy having red wine for a day. Yeah, it's a, I had rosé. I had the little thing that we did the, yeah, rosé. Okay. Oh, did you sl slap the bag? It's that, it's not that <laughs> video, but it's that exact same wine. Yes. And I we were like, that. just play it. And it's so good. So I was like, so I had that. I'm getting ready. We listen to music, had fun doing it. And I was like, okay, vibes are high. I got this. And then I'm like, what if this date sucks? And she's like, you got it. Just if it's bad, you go to dinner, mm -hmm. text me, I'll have a crisis. Like we'll do the old school, like the oldest thing out of the book, you know? And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, will you go down there with me though? And she's like, to get in the Uber? I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh my gosh, yes. Quick pause to talk about our favorite ever, the loungewear at the bras of our dreams, Skims. Because you guys, Skims is creating the next generation of underwear and bras for every space body. Like not everybody, yes, but every single body. Yes. So Jordan and I have used Skims for a very long time, and we recently got like a new shipment, a new delivery. I am obsessed with the t-shirt bra, and I have it in the onyx color, and I'm obsessed with the push-up bra. You, what do you, what do you love? You were talking about it on the call today. The Oh, the online demi bra, the yes. no-show. I have not worn a bra. Well, I stopped wearing bras during COVID, and then 
once we got back to reality, I was like, I got to start wearing bras again. And since 2020, I've only worn a Skims bra and it's like wearing a sports bra. It is so unbelievably comfortable and flattering. And it like doesn't squeeze the fat yes. or the back. It makes you feel sexy. And I was saying I throw sweaters over it and like you kind of need a bra with the sweater. So it's perfect for that. What's the one that you love that's like super sexy? Um, like that sheer? Oh, it's the, it's the sheer one. Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh my God, they're so sexy. I love those. So, ladies and gentlemen, mainly ladies, but gentlemen, get it for your ladies. Um, Skims bras are made with innovative technology to give you the best shape and support, which we can attest to. Plus, every bra is designed with the comfiest and softest material, so you'll feel like you're wearing nothing at all. See? Skims offers a complete system of bra solutions for every need and style, and they are available now in 62 sizes. 30A through 46H. Love that. Wow. Believe the hype, you guys. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The bras are now available at skims.com, plus get free shipping on orders over $75. And if you haven't yet, be sure to let them know that we sent you after you place your order. Remember, select podcast in the survey and select Mean Girl Pod from the drop-down menu that follows happy shopping and happy bra wearing. So I didn't give him my address. I gave him the restaurant next door. That's smart. That's actually very smart of you. To pick me up. So what I was thinking was, on my way down though, I'm like, is he going to be standing outside the Uber? Well, I was going to say first, did he text you when he got there? Was he like coming five? Like, was he give you like coming in five? Yep. He was like uh, tabbing out. And then he said, just got in the Uber. Be there. ETA is. Okay. And so I knew right where he was coming. Tells me the kind of car. So now I'm, f- I'm starting to freak out because I'm like, wait, I asked him. I said, how tall are you for real? And he's like, I'm six two. And I said, but I'm, I'm a five tenner. So like, you can't actually, I need to know if you're six foot. Like, I just need to know now. And he's like, I'm a true six two. And I'm like, well, we'll see. So Ams and I go downstairs and he's standing outside the car. That was my, that was the question I was wanted to ask you. Ams is like, what are you going to do if he's not standing outside the car? I was like, I don't, I Run don't, away. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I was like, please tell me he's standing outside the car, standing outside the car, doors open, doors open. He sees me. He says, hi, Alex. And he says, Hi, Amory, because that's what he thinks, you know, of course. And I was like, good job. He did his homework. Goes over, gives me a hug, gives her a hug. He's like, hi, I'm so-and-so. Opens the door. I mean, I am, my heart is beating out of my chest. I'll say this too. Initial reaction, like outfit, 12 out of 10 when he had, I was like, okay, good. And he's a true 6'2". I was going to say, is he 6'2"? 6'2". Okay. And I Burnett, was like, blonde. Brunette. Okay, I was. I cannot picture you going on a date with a blonde. <laughs> no, me. Oh God, he's redhead. Uh, he's pretty. He's dark, dark hair, dark eyes. Okay. So I get in the car and I'm just like, are, are we? Is this for real? Okay. So he gives you a hug and then you get in the car and then he goes around to the other one. He goes around to the other side. Their bucket seats in the car. Okay. Gets in the car. Um. I was gonna say because there's nothing worse than you getting in the car and then you're like, do do we hu- hug in the car? Like, they have to get out. They have to get out. They're going to pick you up. It's like, because that was, that's why I was like, you, you didn't want to meet him there because I was like, how are you guys supposed to hug and say hi? But he got out. He got out. And when I got in the car, you know what I said? I said, I said, I'm sorry. It just, it could have been such a bad moment right then. Cause if you weren't out of the car, I was like, I really don't know what I would have done. And he, you know what he said? He goes, I have so many friends that don't know to get out of the car. And I was like, no, I believe it. How old is he? Uh, 34, 35. Okay, so he is smart. Yes. It's just like, guys are always like, how are, how can I woo a girl? It's the little things. Just open the door and give the hug. And I think some guys are like too cool. It's like the coolest thing to do is to do that. Out of all, if I think about all the dates in my entire life, the dates that stand out to me are the ones that got out of the car, opened the door for me. I remember when Pete picked me up in the Uber, he got out and like was actually at my doorstep and then walked me to the Uber. Like I remember, like girls remember those things. Yes, and it's just, you, they feel safe with you then. Yeah. I immediately was like, okay, we're, I'm in good hands. Like he's going to open the door. He probably made a reservation. You know, like it's not going to be, we're not going to be bowls in China shops like running around the city. Okay, so then what'd you do? What was like the first conversation you guys had? So he was like, all right, I'm going to give you a rundown on the night. And he's like, because I want you to know what's happening. Do you feel awkward at all? Or are you like, this is going to be easy peasy? Okay, so the first, the Uber ride is not awkward, but it's not, the, the, the date ends up going super seamless. But the Uber ride was, I was so nervous. Which you have every right to be. Yeah, and I, I don't think he was nervous. 
This was your first day in your entire life. I was freaking out. My <laughs> heart was beating out my chest. I was like, oh my gosh. And the good news was like, I was like, okay, he's cute and he's sweet. Like, this is okay. It's not like a tragic, I mean, it's actually a really good, you know, it's cute. Um, so, okay. So we go to, he says, we're going to a rooftop bar and we're going to get some appetizers. Okay. And then he said, then I'm taking you. And he goes, and I would never recommend this to a friend, but he's like, I'm taking you to the ball museum. No, it's not the ball museum. It's the balloon museum. I was like, you lost me at the ball <laughs> the museum. Ball museum. <laughs> She's like, I'm done. He's like, and I listen to the podcast, so I know I'm taking you to the ball museum. No, he goes, I'm taking you to the balloon museum. Okay. And I thought, huh? And he said, I know. And he goes, it's a massive risk for a first date. He's like, I've never been. But he's like, my best friend posted a photo at the sickest thing ever. And he did a video. And I texted him. I said, where are you? I've got to take this girl there. And this is where he was at. And he's like, shot in the dark. But he said it was awesome. Ballsy first date move. I like it. And I appreciated him being like, this is ballsy. Which I feel like since a friend of a friend introduced you and you guys had FaceTime, talked on the phone, it was okay. But if this was like a hinge blind day, I would be like, what the fuck? Correct. I think this gave him leeway to do this because he, all those things I just listed. Exactly. Like this isn't random. Mm -hmm. And then he said afterwards, we're going to go eat again, like a real dinner. Okay. I was going to say when he first said, come hungry, we're not eating till eight, eight thirty. I was like, oh, wow. That's a long time to be hungry for. This makes sense. And he, so we go to this rooftop bar and you've been overstory downtown. <gasps> yes. And it is a vibe. And we stunning. And I was proud of him for this because we walk in. And he's like, I've got a reservation for there. So it wasn't, we didn't have to like get a bar seat had a spot. He had it down. We went outside on the balcony, like saw the New York skyline. You go back in. He asked me what I wanted to drink. He ordered it. Did he pay? Paid. What'd you get? I got um, champagne. Love. What'd and you get? He got vodka soda with a bunch of lime. Oh. He's like, it's a ranch water. Um, and he was like, but I do it with vodka. Wait, lime juice or lime? Lime juice. Oh, I love. Extra lime juice. Okay. He's like, I love these drinks. So that what? was like, we, had, and then he ordered tater tots and oysters. Wait, cute things you can eat. Yes. He was like, he said, I'm going to hand you this menu. You tell me, pick out like six things you want. And then I'll go from there. Cause he said, I think we've got some dietary restrictions. I was like, we sure do. Wait, cute. Right. Wasn't that nice? I also love that he made a reservation because there's nothing more awkward than going on a first, second, third date with someone and having to wait for a table because you're like, do we have the talk, small talk now? Right. Or do we wait till we sit down? So we had everything planned out. And he knew he was very, he wasn't passive when it came to like walking up to the hostess mm -hmm. or anything like that. How many drinks did you guys have before you moved on? Okay. So he's very fun. So I, well, I was watching him because I was kind of pacing off him actually. And he drank that first one, not too fast, mm -hmm. but he was like drinking it. Yeah. And I still had like a little bit left in mine. And he's like, another round. And then he, he looks over at me. And he's like, it's Saturday night in the city. He's like, we're going to have fun tonight. And I was like, thank you. Like that's so that's what I told him was a turning point where I was like, I can relax. I love that. And he goes, I'm going to order you champagne. And I'm going to assume that's what you want until you tell me otherwise. And then I'll change your drink order. But until then, I've got you. And did he stick with ranch waters with vodka? Yep. That's what he had. So, okay. so we had three there. Okay. I know. Papa. I was glad I had the uh, champagne because I was like, oh, I would be, they could not do that. <laughs> I mean, three. three. I know. He's I like, I love that. So he's like, we're here for an hour and we're going to eat this. You guys had three in an hour? Yeah, it was fast. I was like, whoa, it was a sprint moment. I love that. Yeah. He was like, <laughs> and he was just talkative, but not too talkative. I was going to say, like, did he ask you questions? Asked me a lot of questions. Oh, good. He has a really interesting job and he was very interested in me and like what we did knew and knew enough that he wasn't like brand new, mm -hmm. but definitely has never listened to an episode. I was going to say, how was his body language? Like, was he with the eye contact? Like, were you, what kind of table were you sitting at? Was it a, a high well, top, low top? It's a high top and overstory. They have them. We were sitting side by side. Love that. It was great. So his body language wasn't too open, but it was, it was very much so towards me. Okay. Eye contact, never checked the phone. Love. Very intentional and like really engaged. And he's animated. Oh, I love. I had a blast here. Like, I was like, this is great. And how much did he know about you? Uh, didn't know where I was from. Knew I wasn't from New York. Uh, he was like, I think you're from Midwest or South. Knew we knew we had Mean Girl Pod. Knew your name. Okay. Love um, that. <laughs> knew your name. Knew we weren't at Barstool anymore. 
but has never listened to an episode and is like familiar with like some barstool people type that's, thing. That's perfect. He's not pretending he knows nothing, but he's also not like a massive stoolie or mean girl pod fan. Correct. It was like just enough. And he, so he could ask questions around it, mm -hmm. but he wasn't like, it was like perfect. And did you feel like you could t ask back or were you nervous? Like, no, I, I wasn't nervous. I started asking back because his answers were so interesting and mm -hmm. thorough that it was like the conversation just started flowing. I can't picture you nervous. So like, I just like, even if you were, I'm like, what does Alex look like nervous? <laughs> I was like, my heart was beating so fast, but I calmed down like this meal in the middle of it. I was like, oof. Okay. And I was like, okay, we're good. And then he's like, let's go outside. So we walked around and saw the skyline and that was cool. And he used to live in New York for five years. So he like showed me where he lived. So he knows the city. He knew the city. He had a lot to talk about. So that was good. Okay. And then when the check came, like, did it come to the table or did you have to pay at the bar? It came to the table. And how'd that go down? He just grabbed it immediately. Did you offer? He plopped his card. No. I love he that. He plopped his card down and I just looked at him and I put my hand like right here and I said, thank you very much. And I said this, I was really nice that you planned this and like, I appreciate it. And he's like, you're welcome. I love this, Alex. He, he was great. I was like, okay, cool. I feel like, I know we talk about it all the time, but what I felt in the moment was like, he called, said, I want to take you on the date. He's got the first date. Yeah, he, he's got he, even now I know we're going to three places mm -hmm. and I'm going to let him get all three. Honestly, I think I, I mean, I, I agree with men always should pay on the first date, but I've come to it where it's like if a guy's asking you on a date, you don't need like it's nice to offer, but like you don't need to on the first date. And it felt like it would be a weird dynamic. It didn't feel like the time to offer. Yeah, I, I like you can read a room and sometimes it's just like really awkward. Correct. And, yeah. it, and it would have been awkward like. He just whipped it out. He was, in, he was talking and he's like paid. And I was like, thank you. And he's like, you're welcome. I'm like, and he said, I'm so happy we're doing this. I love that. So I was like, he's good to go. So how did you get to the balloon museum? So he, he had told me we were there for an hour. And then he looked at me and said, oh, okay, Uber's here. And we were like still upstairs. Love. So I said, good job calling a black because you know it'll wait. I think it's a good first date move. Well, you have to like, yes, you have to like make sure things are running smoothly. So do what you got to do. That's the thing. Like, you know, I'm like in this instance where you've planned moving parts like this and you don't want to go downstairs. You don't want to wait for the Uber. You want to get down there and it's there. Waiting for things on first dates are so awkward. I couldn't stomach it. So when he said that, he's like, okay, Uber's here. And then he's like, it's going to wait on us. I'm running to the bathroom. Stay here and let's go. Okay. Okay. So we go downstairs. We get in the Uber. Did and you open he, the door? Opened the door. Opened every door. And then when we were walking to the Uber, he goes, I'm getting your side and I'm going around. And I was like, I'm good. And he was like, nope. And just grabbed it. So I popped in. Then he walked around. I know. I was like, okay, thank you. His mom, his mom trained him well. I know. And I was like, I'm not going to fight him. Like, I was like, I'll just, you know what? Great. Wait, where is he from? Canada. I think Canadians are like the Midwest, just well-trained, <laughs> behaved men. Just a well-trained man. Yes. Yeah, his, his manners were like... They were great, but his conver his conversation was good too. Does he have an accent? No. Okay. But I think it's because he's lived a lot of places. Like he lives in Hong Kong, lives in LA. Like he's kind of well traveled. Yeah, well traveled. Love. Yeah, it travels a lot for work too. Um. So then we go to the balloon museum. Okay. I tell you what, and we're walking in and he's like, I can't believe we're doing this. I can't believe I'm taking a girl here on a first date. And that was disarming because he had a sense of humor about it. Are, is the museum free? No. Did he buy tickets? We walked up. He had a reservation for the time. He had the tickets. He is so planned. I love this. It, I felt it was so not awkward. This museum was unbelievable. Quick pause to talk about AG1 because first of all, it's the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be our healthiest, best selves, which is why Jordan and I both gave AG1 a try because we were, try we were tired of taking so many supplements and we just wanted one single solution that supports our entire body and it's easy to do and it's easy to implement, supports our gut health, boosts our energy. It's such a seamless process and it and I can't stress enough how easy it is to integrate this into your everyday life. Do you want to know why I love AG1 so much? Why? Because you and I have been traveling so much, especially around the holidays. So it's been really hard to get my greens in and it's just something I can take every day. 
I bloat less. I feel more energized because I'm getting my supplements, my nutrients in, and it's just so easy to travel with. Exactly. And you guys, it's so necessary to get your prebiotics, your probiotics, and your digestive enzymes for gut support and your magnesium and your B vitamins for energy support and to balance your body. And it is like, if you're not doing this, it's such a simple thing to implement into your diet and it makes the biggest difference ever. So AG1 is the supplement that we trust to provide the support that our body needs. And that's why we are excited to partner with them and you guys get to benefit from it too. So if you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase, which is like, that's massive. Go to drinkag1.com slash mean girl. That's drinkag1.com slash mean girl. Check it out today. Is it there year round? No, it's a pop-up. Unbelievable. It was so much fun. It was slightly interactive, not cheesy in the least, and like really freaking cool. And you felt like it was quiet enough to have a conversation. He said, I would never come here if it weren't a Saturday night. Because he's like, this thing would be a, mu- a pop-up museum is going to be busy during the day. And he's like, but a Saturday night at 730, not that busy. So you guys could still talk and like have conversation. Talked the whole time, walked around and you see these like, and the balloons were being blown up and then they're bl- blown back down. And it's like, there's so much to be like, whoa, or like there's bubbles. And I- I'm-, I'm painting it kind of cheesy. This is no. like a badass museum. I, I That's why I asked if it's year round because like I would like to go. That sounds fun. I would go again. Wow. Okay. And it's like moody and dark and everyone there was like dressed cool. Like people were in heels. Yeah. It was kind of a whole thing. How long were you at the museum for? Uh, 45 minutes. I was say four hours. I was like, whoa. Four hours. He said though, he was like, listen, I like museums. This is just for fun. So like, we don't have to stay, like we don't have to stay here that long. Well, and he had a dinner reservation, right? Yes. Okay. So we go through the museum, but there's like an adult ball pit, we, like jump in. Both him too? Yes. And it's oh, like- he is fun. He's really fun. And he seems relaxed. Like he just doesn't care. You know what he was too? Totally humble. No ego. Love. He, he, he was easy. He was very fun. Um, so after the museum, he says, okay, we have two dinner reservations. And he goes, you need to pick. And he's like, the cuisines are breakfast. So it's like a diner or it's a burger at kind of like an upscale place. And I was like, typically I would pick diner right here, but I'm going to go burger. So we went to Oshaval, which I'd never been to. And I've always wanted to go. Okay. That's like high on my list. Was it great? phenomenal but he said if you pick the burger place you have to get the burger and I said okay the burger place and it was mouth-watering oh my god great also how did he get a reservation at Oshval that last minute holy crap I know I don't know we but he had the and I was like great and I have great burger and great conversation did he get a burger too yep we both got burgers what did you guys get to drink uh at that point I had white wine okay. and he had a Michelob Ultra how many drinks Three there, so six total. And then what? How long, how long were you there for? Like, when did the day end? Okay, so we were there for, we were at this dinner, I think till like 11. Oh my God, that's amazing. Just talking. He's a really fascinating, he's kind of an entrepreneur, like really fascinating job. Yeah. That's like a bunch of questions. And then he's like, what's going on in Oklahoma? You know, it's like, you have all that to talk about. Yeah. And then afterwards, we went to a neighborhood bar and had one more drink. Uh, by... Like neighborhood by where you live? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, love that. Yeah, Ubered me near there. And then he was like, I actually know this bar. And I was like, I've actually been there one time and I love it. And he's like, one more drink. And I was like, sure. Oh, so like when did the day end? Like what time? I think I got home at 12.15. Okay, that's like really appropriate. Walked me to my door. Okay, so he walked you to your door. Did you guys hug? Hugged. How was that? Totally fine. I, I think he was being just like, just not even putting me through that. Like, I think he was like, I'm just gonna hug this girl. But was it like a let's do this again sometime or like which is like oh so nice bye so he gave me like a really sweet hug Aww. and then he like pulled me back and had my, my hands right here like this and he was like I had a blast with you that was so much fun and I would love to see you again tomorrow if you would do coffee with me if you I love how to. intentional like his like com- like he like really makes you feel like you're in the moment with him I feel like yes he was so present yeah present yeah yeah so present and Wait, he asked you what a coffee date the next day yeah he said he said I cannot believe I'm doing this and he goes but if you want to do coffee tomorrow, he was like, I would love that because I'm just not here that long. Oh, yeah. When did, how many days was he there for? Like till Tuesday, I think. Okay, which is like kind of a perk because it like forces him to be more like, let's see, let's see each other again. Right. He was like, you, you know, and I, I was like, okay, okay. 
I said, well, yeah. And he was like a late one, you know, like sleep in, do your thing. And he's like, like around 11 or noon. If you want to grab a coffee on a Sunday, let's do it. I'd love to. Okay. And he left like real casual. So I went on the coffee. Okay. But first backtrack when you got home, how'd you feel? I was just, I felt out of body. In a good way? In a great way. Okay. So like you felt like happy. I felt happy. I was playing my Taylor Swift over like the loudspeakers. I was like taking off my makeup and I just was like, okay, cool. Like, let's not overthink this. Let's just like, did you have fun? How do you feel? And I was like, I had a blast. I had a great conversation. I thought he was really cute. I don't have to like think too much here. Like I was trying to get out of my own head too. Yeah. Like, I was like, you don't have to do anything over the top with these thoughts. Get in bed. And then you saw him the next day. So I got, yes, I woke up the next day and did. Also, did he text you like when he got back to the hotel and was like, had a great night? Yeah, he did. He said he was just like, had so much fun with you. Um, I'll text you in the morning. And he, he waited till like 1045 the next day, which I loved. Okay. To text. No, 945 the next I day. Say 10, 5, 5. Yeah, that was just kind of stressful. <laughs> uh, but he was like, he's like, if you want your Sunday, take your Sunday. If not, uh, and he like sends me the place and he's like, we could go here. It's near you. You can walk um, noon. And I was like, I'll see you there because I wanted to see him. Like yeah. I was like, that sounds like fun. Uh, so I went, you know what I just, pro tip here, girls, get the coffees, buy the coffees. Easy peasy. I mean, like you pull the card out. He let me, he, he didn't balk. He was like, that was really sweet. Thank you. You didn't have to do that. And I was like, you did all last night. And he was like, thank you. Also, coffee is a little cheaper. A lot cheaper. That's actually a good, good move. Yeah. And like, I was like, oh, I got that 15 total, like a little croissant. I was like, done. Yeah. You know, and then it shows like you're down to like you. I don't want to set the precedent of like you have to pay. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me slide in here. And then I think something if we did dinner again, like I, I would assume he would probably get that. Maybe I could get like a I don't even know. Yeah. Gut check. But like that felt I was like, I got this. Um, sat, had a great talk. Okay. So much fun. How many hours were you there for? Hour and a half. And then what? And then, and then, um, oh, I was meeting, uh, the girls to watch football, which she was like cracking up about. So I was like, I got to go like, get ready. Like I need to, I do need to go do that. I was going to Rocco's. So I was like, I do need to go do this. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was like, all right. He was like, yep. And he had plans too, which was perfect. Cause a lot of his friends live in New York. So it was just like, that was done. Texted me that night, um, and it was great. Wait, did he like hug you goodbye again, walk you home? I hugged me goodbye, yeah. And he walked. He was like, oh, "I'm gonna take this street home." So he's like, "I'll just drop you right back by that door, girl." And then, like, he went back to LA. He went back to LA. Are you gonna see him again? Well, so I'm going to LA this week. Does he know that? He knows that. Oh, because he's bi coastal. Yeah, because he's back and forth, and so he's gonna be there. So I think we are gonna go out one night. Wait, bye. I know. I'm so excited. Wait, Alex, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. It was like, I was like, okay, this is fun. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like just sort of a. Also, like how great of a to have like a bi-coastal person because you are so busy that you will know when he comes to New York. So you can like kind of wrap, if, if things like go well, you can like wrap your head around like, oh, he's in New York for these dates. I can see him these dates. Totally. I'm in LA this, because you'll be going to LA for work a lot. So it's like. Uh, yeah, we're going to be in LA like so many times in December, January. Like, he's like, that actually ironically just worked out. Yeah. And so, yeah, he was like, I would love to see you. But he's so good. It just gives me enough that I feel very comfortable, mm -hmm. um, but isn't like overbearing. I love that. That's I'm so glad. Like, it's so exciting that your first date went well. And I'm so happy everything went well. And I need to meet him. And we need to go on a double date one day. If things go well. That's right. I mean, we're busy, all that. We have to we're do all busy. those things. We could do all of that. But I need to meet him if things go well. Yeah. We'll and see how your third date goes well, how it goes in LA. I do. I think I like, there's so many instances. What's cool about me asking him about his job or like seeing him do things, I think you get to learn a lot about somebody in that setting because mm -hmm. it's kind of like a character moment. Yeah. And so I feel like I get a lot of data on him that way. So I'm excited because Venice is like where the office is. Yeah. So it's kind of like headquarters. So I feel like maybe I'll see more of him. Yeah. And like his natural habitat. That I uh, That's actually so valid. Like seeing someone in their natural habitat's huge. Like I was in mine and he lived in New York. So he wasn't, he didn't feel like a stranger by any means. Mm -hmm. But that's not home. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So this will be different because I have to be oh home. God, I'm so excited. So much to come in 2024. I know. I mean, I'm just like, whoa. Stay tuned for Alex's dating saga. Oh my gosh. She just had a heart attack. Jordan's married and Alex is dating. <laughs> the shoe's on the other foot. <laughs> 
Jordan's married. I'm actually married, guys. Pete doesn't know, but we're married. <laughs> Pete, Pete's already proposed. Pete's all listening to me like, what the fuck? Yeah, I die for the day that that man proposes. <laughs> I know you do too. I know for Chris, he's like, what do you want? I go, if it's not an engaged ring, I don't want it. I'm just going to say that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's fun being crazy sometimes. It's You know what? It's cute that you can joke about it because it means yeah. like you're serious. Yeah. But like, you, you know, know have a sense of humor about it. Yeah. 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 Um, did like, you want to talk about tipping? <gasps> yes. Okay. Because I was thinking about, well, tips have just come to my brain a lot lately. Do you <laughs> ever look at, I think it's an important thing that I've never had to think about, but so when they would bring over the iPads and things to, to tab out, I could see him tipping and mm -hmm. like, I wasn't trying to look. But I think you want to see how somebody treats people in the service industry. Oh, yeah. A thousand percent. And I thought, but then I thought, okay, on meals, you know, out to dinner, of course, you know, you're going to tip a whatever person. And, and I would assume in, in the range of a 15 to 25. I think it's 20 is like the standard. Yeah. what I think. But, but then I was thinking the next day on like a coffee where I was paying, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, he's probably also wondering if I go like no tip here. That's how... I feel about people in the service industry. So like, I was like, well, I'm always a pretty appropriate tipper. Yeah. And, and as was he, but I thought, have you ever looked at how a guy tips and thought anything of it? So I have been able to like on dates see, because usually guys are like, they get the thing and they like write it in. Um, I would say if I found out a guy wasn't tipping at least 20%, I'd be a little, Stand, like turned off like if all of a sudden like Pete and I were at dinner and he like tipped 10% I'd be like what are you doing like tip 20% he doesn't do that he tips very well um so like that's a big thing for me I will say if we're like at a coffee shop I'm not like turned off if they don't tip I don't always because sometimes they like, just like hand me the coffee and they don't say a word to me right but like I'll tip if like the person's super nice because sometimes like you meet people and they're just like hi how are you and like I'm like you're so kind you just made my day and I'll tip but like I wouldn't be like, ew, to like that type of thing. So I'm with you on that. I think like a meal out where you had dinner and drinks and mm -hmm. things and like they're waiting on you the whole time. They get a lot, like a, a portion of their income is dedicated to tips. Totally. Yeah. These coffees though, man. I mean, because they, because they hit you with the doll, the one, two, three dollars, which is like so much more. Percent. And I was thinking about it and I was like, well, I was wondering what he was doing last night, but then I'm like, that tipping percentage doesn't apply to the coffee shop. Yeah, no. Or like if we got an Uber Eats. Also, coffee is like $10 in New York. So it's already so expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And like Uber Eats is different because like they have to bike and like actually do labor to bring it to you. But like at a coffee shop, sometimes they just, they aren't even making the coffee. They just like, you know what I mean? The cashier people, they just grab it and hand it to you. Right. So it's like, that's like a way I was like, okay, I wouldn't care at all about this. Yeah. Or like a local bar, like at a local bar for me, if I see the same bartender every time I tip him more Yeah. because he like takes care of you. Right. But I was like out on, on drinks and things. I think people do things differently. Yeah. Um, but when he was signing the tab, I was like, wow, I really hope he, I, I have to think about these things. Like somebody standing outside the Uber, are you taking care of the waiter? Like, and I was like, man, I've never had to think about them, but now I'm wondering and they kind mm. of. I'm like, is that a deal breaker for me or not? I think how someone treats white staff speaks volumes to how they are as a person, like how they communicate to them, how they treat them, how they tip them, how they like, like the whole thing can really teach you about someone's character. I found out when we walked up to the first hostess and he was like, hey, how are you girls tonight? And they're like, good, how are you? And he was like, we're great. We're, and then just, I was like, okay, good. Because what if he would have walked up been like two for X, Y, Z and been like too cool for school. I just think I would have been like, I'm just going to go home. Yeah. Cause on principle, like you gotta be any, and, and, and that's, you're right. It's such a big deal. How somebody treats like a waiter. If someone treats like a stranger, like crap, they're gonna, I think they're going to treat you like crap. It's just like, it's a facade until they get to know you and then they're going to treat you like crap. Totally. Like that's something I really paid attention to. Um, even like when I met like girls for the first time, like on gr like those girlfriend dates, if someone like walked into a, a restaurant or order and was just like, I'll have this, 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 thank you. I'm like, you're not my friend. Like you're not going to be a, we're not going to be a match for friends. No, and I'm going to want to crawl out of my skin when we're together. Yeah. 
Like if we're at dinner and somebody's being, I'm just like, oh, it's a reflection of the whole table. Like I love someone who's like, hi, how are you? Like, thank you so much. All of this. It's like, it's not that hard. Right. You're like, this was made wrong. And like, I'm so sorry, but like, can you just, yeah. you know, and they say it really nicely. They're so much more apt to respond. Yeah. And it, it changes the whole vibe of the evening too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Tipping's big. Yeah, it is big. And the way that they treat people is big. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Listener question, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, should the breadwinner of the relationship pay the bigger bills or should it be 50-50? This one's a hard one because I feel like it's very different if you're talking about relationship versus marriage. Mm -hmm. Let's do relationship because marriage is a whole different ballgame. Okay, 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 fair. Well, how soon do you have the finance talk in a relationship? How do you know who the breadwinner is? So Pete and I had the finance talk very early on um, because like that's just something I wanted because finance has always been like a very stressful thing with me with my like dad just Mm -hmm. it's just always been a big stressor mine I never want that my my like partner I never want to be with someone who's like so well we're not doing this because finances or I'm not going out tonight because I don't want to spend money like I can't let finances control my life for my relationship so I needed to understand how Pete handled finances so we had that talk like very early on and um both of him and I do very well for ourselves and we're now at the part of our relationship where we, he does get more than me, but he also lets me get things. Um, if, if I was dating someone who made an astronomical amount than me, I think it would be fair if he did pay for more. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm talking about like a significant amount, like right. to the point where it's like, kind of like, haha. <laughs> Like, you know how much you make. I think it'd be like nice of them to like at least pay more for like the like going out type of thing. 100%. Um, And even with like rents, like I know a lot of my friends when they were, um, I have a lot of friends who live with their boyfriends and their boyfriends just happen to be the person who makes a lot more money. The boyfriend does pay more for rent because it's one of those things where it's like, all right, bro, like you make so much more than me. Yeah. But um, if the roles were reversed, I think it'd be totally fine if a girl paid for more, but I don't think a lot of guys would allow that. Right. Like if, if I may, I don't make more, but if I made a significant amount more than Pete, like to the point where it was like funny, he still wouldn't make me, let me pay more. Right. Just because like he, that's like how he, he likes being able to take care of me. And like, he just likes how that, how he, he like wants to be the person who does that. Right. So it's right. hard. I totally. Yeah. I know. It's, it's hard to not say yeah, it should skew in favor of the breadwinner. Yeah. Like on on just a black and white basis, yeah, the one that makes more, if they're cool with it, pays for more. Yeah. Um, but I agree on things like nights out. Like they pull a little bit more of that weight. Yeah. Or if you go on a vacation, maybe it's like a 70-30 split. Exactly. And it just goes in favor of the breadwinner. Yeah, like Pete and I are going to Seattle or we already were technically, I guess, in Seattle. Um, and like we split the hotel, but I know for a fact he will pay for every dinner. Exactly. And then I'll, I'll get the lunches. And the coffees. And the, the coffees. coffees, yeah. But like, I just know like, that's like how, like, that's just how it is with him. Right. Um, but I, I just think, I think it's important to have the finance talk like pretty early on. Also, when you spend time with people, like it's kind of like you and I, like if you get something or I get something, I don't think about it. I'm just like, oh, I'll just get it next. You know what I mean? Totally. And you just make good on it. Yeah. You know, I think too, I think there's this whole thing around girls wanting a guy to pay for everything. Mm -hmm. Wanting like that wealthy person. And it's like, it kind of poses the question. It sets a precedent really early on if a guy pays for everything and the girl like lets him Mm -hmm. that like she expects it. So then we get to the point where like she never pulls her wallet out. Right. Yeah. And it's like, there are plenty of guys out there that will pay for everything. They're a dime a dozen. I've dated them. You've dated them. And maybe you haven't dated. I have not dated. (laughs) You haven't dated anyone. I haven't dated any of them. (laughs) Sorry. Um, But you've dated them. We've seen people date them. Yeah. Like we know the type. And it's like, you got to ask yourself, do you want the hotel room? Or do you want the guy you're in the hotel room with? Like, do you want that five-star hotel room? Or do you want, like, the experience of who you're with? Because yeah. t- they, they can be the same thing. But I'm like, they can also be two very different things. Like, what are you looking for? And I think it's cool if a guy can pay for everything. But he's like, I'm not setting that precedent because there's plenty of guys out there that can pay for everything. 
And you've got a job. Like if you want to buy one in every four to five things, like great. Yeah. And also too, it makes it still so much more special. Like Pete is dating me when he does, like since I do pay for some things, but when we go out to dinner, he'll pay. And I'm like, you don't have to do it. He's like, no, I want to. They want to. And I'm like, wait, because I don't, I don't know it's coming. Like he's so kind and like polite and will pay. But like, since we, I pay for a lot of things too. I'm always like, wait, thank you for taking me out tonight. And he wanted to take you out tonight. Yeah. And you don't expect it. So it's so sweet when they do it. And also too, like I see a future with him where our money, like his money, my money is our money. So I don't think ever like, oh, I have to pay for this. It's just like, no, we're paying for this kind of together. Totally. Yeah. You look, you look at it and you're like, I got 50% of that. Yeah. And vice versa. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's having the finance, the, the finance, why does that sound weird? I don't finance know. Finance talk early on was game changing. Like I felt like it just gave us so much clarity and it just helped put both of us at ease. And it removes the pressure around it, which shouldn't even be there. It's like a societal pressure that doesn't need to exist. Yeah. And also he just moved. So I'm like, I got it. Like I'll take, like when he first moved to his partner, I'm like, I'll pay for dinner. Like you just moved and spent thousands of dollars. Like let me pay for dinner. Yeah. I'm not hurting that. I'm not feeling that sting right now. I yeah, got this. Totally. Exactly. Like, and there's going to be times where, like, when we first left Barstool, I was like, you got this. I, like, I don't have a job. And he's like, let me take care of it. And you're like, OK. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I, it's it's just it's going to be a case by case basis in every relationship. But I think you need to, like, talk about finances early on. But I loved what you said about, like, it, like the hotel room. It's like, do you want them to buy the hotel room or does it matter who's, like, in the hotel room more? Yeah. Like, would you rather have the person? Yeah. And they, there's plenty out there that'll buy it for you. Yeah. But. Because at the end of the day, it's like, oh, cool, you bought me a trip. But if I don't like being with the person who bought me that trip, like that trip's going to suck. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much more special to think about it a different way. Yeah. That's a good question, though. It is a good question. Yeah. I'm kind of for the 70-30. Yeah. And, Depending unless on the situation. Somebody's like astronomically making more. Yeah. Which happens. I mean, it can happen a lot. Totally. Pop off if you are. Um, But yeah, I think that was a good episode. I'm really excited about to see like what your dating life turns into. Follow us on everything. Go subscribe. Send this to all your friends. And um, yeah, first date. This one's going to skew high in the state of Oklahoma. So yeah. what's up, guys? <laughs> we love you guys so much. <laughs> <Mwah>. <laughs>